So the end conclusion, which one do I recommend? Well, here's what we've kind of gone over. This is a little chart I've made. You can see that with interface, media import, media organization, and editing gaps, as well as exporting the media, I'm going to be recommending Final Cut Pro 10. For complex effects, I'm choosing Premiere Pro. And for camera smoothing, audio problems, and focus, I'm saying that those are ties. Over on what type of video students make, animation goes to Premiere Pro because of its integration with After Effects. Art video is a tie, depending on what the production value they want to go with. Documentary, documented, found and run recontextualized footage go to Final Cut Pro 10. And manipulated and heavy effects footage goes to Premiere, with music video being a tie. Other institutions, ACAD is kind of all over the place, most of them choosing to just buy everything with most of their emphasis just kind of sticking with Final Cut Pro Studio. And television is film are sticking with Final Cut Pro Studio, once again an option that we cannot do when we move over to the new operating system in the 2013-2014 term. Or they're going with Avid. Cost, once again, $200 per year per seat for us, for both us as a college and for students. It pretty much equals out. For a graduated student, however, the cost is significantly less for them to go with Final Cut Pro 10. So my choice would be for us to go with Final Cut Pro 10 and Logic. Now, this is not a choice that I've made lightly. When I first started using Final Cut Pro 10, I am someone who has used nonlinear editing since it first came out with the Avid, moved into Final Cut Pro 1 all the way through. I like to use keyboard shortcuts, which is something that Premiere Pro actually has an advantage in. I did not like using Final Cut Pro 10. You have to sit with it for a while if you have already used a and have experience with a previous professional nonlinear editor. It takes a little bit of time for you to get used to it. In my experience, and once I did get used to it though, I think that our students who have never used any version of Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro previous to this are going to love it. If we go back and look at the student problems, you can see how many of those problems Final Cut Pro 10 has gone in and fixed. This is going to take a lot of time away from us as instructors troubleshooting problems and giving those students a lot more time to edit and learn how to fine tune and cut their edits. So it's going to be a little bit more work for us as instructors to, to relearn how to use this program. But I think the benefits are going to far outweigh the negatives. Now, we are taking a gamble with this. There are a few things that we have to trust Apple is going to do to update this. There are a few things that I want them to do, which is stronger integration with the keyboard, keeping editing marks set, and stronger and stronger ability to export and import things out. But I do believe that they're going to do that in all of the industry talk that I've looked at and spent my time looking at. They really, really are putting a lot of emphasis on making sure the professionals like this. I think right now we're at a crossroads. As we were back in the mid-90s when there were a lot of people that were editing on Steinbeck's and actually cutting film and they did not want to move over to nonlinear editing. Those people, there were younger people that kind of came up, they didn't know anything about Steinbeck's, they understood computers and they took over editing on nonlinear linear editing systems and other people started following from film to the nonlinear editing systems. I think we're at another crossroads. If we look at the change that's gone from CS5 to to Premiere Pro 6, you can see that they are going more and more towards the interface that is already there with Final Cut Pro 10. And I think what's going to happen is those people that are used to and using this is the way that things are going to be edited in the future. And those people who are uncomfortable with changing over are going to be left behind. The way that Final Cut Pro 6 and 7 did it, the way that Premiere still does it, I think is something that is going to slowly and slowly fade away in favor of the way that Final Cut Pro 10 does it. And that is why I'm going to recommend this as our cho choice to go forward with at PNCA.
If you have any questions, thank you for listening. I know this has been a very, very long demo. If you have any questions or any comments or anything that you'd like to talk about, please let me know. Thank you for watching. I really, really do value your recommendations and your input on this. Have a great day.